Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon down here at Burford Pro Shop. Just finished a full day. Weather is delightful at the moment. Um, and it's just come up to quarter to seven. So I'm going to do a quick video. I talked about this a while back. Basically, I want to get into doing swing analysis videos, um, analysing your guys' swings and then growing as a community. Maybe you might have some of the similar faults and drills and everything else like that. So thank you to the two guys that sent me your swings. Um, uh, this could be the first episode. I want to do this weekly. So basically, if you want to... Get a part of the episode. All I want you to do is follow me on Instagram, which is SES Golf, um, and send me your swings through there. It's the easiest way. I don't really use Facebook. Um, I don't really use email. It's a bit more uh, cumbersome doing it that way. So if you haven't got Instagram, go and make an account. Follow me. Send me your swings. Um, I post some good stuff. I'll show you some stuff that I post on there anyway. So obviously I've got way too much free time on my hands. Um, uh, so basically that's my Instagram account, go and follow it if you like it. But this video is about me analysing swings. Now, when it comes to coaching videos on YouTube, there is basically so much content when it comes to coaching that it's all out there. If you can learn from coaching videos, then it's all out there to be had. My only downside, and this is probably similar for a lot of golf coaches out there, is not the content, like the content's fantastic, it's the self-diagnosing. And people, when they try and diagnose their faults, is probably worse when they're trying to fix it with other solutions. So it's like, basically, it's like having an illness, and rather than going to the doctor, you look online, and then you see all these things, and all of a sudden you think you're gonna die in a week. So. That's what I say when it comes to online coaching. If you can spot what's wrong and you can spot the fix, then brilliant. It's gonna work for you, you're gonna get better. However, sometimes when you think that you're fading the ball where in reality you're pulling it or drawing, actually you're pull hooking it, all these things is when it comes down to golf coaches. This is why golf coaches still have jobs nowadays. Um, uh, so anyway, let's talking. I'm gonna get into both the guys that send me swings again, thank you very much for saying swings guys I want positive comments mainly because it's very brave and obviously it's gonna get quite a few views so um, uh, yeah positivity as I say and um, any comments that you think might help or any comments to make this better as a series then please do leave it down below right let's get into it okay so we're gonna start off with Sam I'm gonna ask you always questions guys if you want to send me a video Hit me up on Instagram to say swing review for YouTube and you'll be in next week's episode, depending on how many I get. Hopefully this is popular, hopefully we can keep doing this. So Sam, age 17, handicap 10, been playing for two years, started freshman year of high school. So first of all, well done. Getting down to 10 in two years with school, you're doing well. You're on the right track, obviously, and you'll see your swing. You're obviously generating a good amount of club head speed, which is fantastic. Previous lesson three weeks ago, this is probably my failing I would have wanted to know what he's done in that lesson, um, what he's been working on, whether it's similar to what I'm thinking on working on. The more information I have, the better. So that's my fault more than anything. Good shot draw, bad shot fade. Now, to be perfectly honest, um, both of those are good shots. Draw and fade, technically, the ball's finishing on the target. If it misses the target to the left, then all of a sudden your draw becomes a hook. And if it misses to the right, then that fade becomes a slice. So both of those are good shots. What I imagine he's probably saying is he, I imagine he probably hits a fade more often than not. A pull hook is probably that draw shot that he's talking about. But then that's when the self-diagnosis that I said at the start of the video kind of comes an issue. What I want to improve on, mental game, which is good. That's really good. If you want to get down to single figures, mental game is key. And I want to improve striking the ball, which again is good. Goal, I want to be able to play college for golf. Brilliant. No problem, Sam, you're gonna be able to do that. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how you're gonna do that. Um, uh, so let's get straight into the swing. So, okay, so first of all, mental game. Can't really help on that in video analysis. However, I would say Bob Rotella, Bob Rotella, Bob Rotella. Read all of his books. Search for the perfect golf swing is probably the best start. 15th club. So just from the camera, now this is difficult to say, but obviously he's hitting iron off the tee, flag is in the distance. I'm guessing this is a par three. Ball starts left to target, and I imagine that's probably coming back on target, which is a fade, which tells me, as a golf coach, that he's probably coming across it. However, 
him hitting a fade is not going to stop him getting down to single figures and playing college golf. What will cause is, is that inconsistent strike and potentially getting a tiny bit stuck. But my biggest advice, Sam, you're going to be doing a lot of college when you play college golf is I would get down to the gym, get a personal trainer. I'm not a PT, so I can't give you any instructions. However, you're young, you're going to get bigger, you're going to get stronger. Core and leg work is key. Any golfer that's any good is in the gym working on this kind of stuff. You might already be working on it, but again, getting that um, strength to hold your posture at impact because you do get quite trapped there, worth having a look at, all right? But otherwise, you're generating a good amount of clubhead speed, which is fantastic, um, and that's down the line, I've got no issue. At this point, realistically, down the line, I've got no issue with, yes, a club comes under us, for example, but realistically, a club comes down on a great line from that position, and yes, you do get a bit trapped. But I'm looking, that's not going to help our strike at the end of the day. This is the bit that I want to have a look at. Just guys, let, when you take a video, take it like that way, not that way. But again, that's my fault more than anything else. So, Sam's face on. This would be the issue. And again, this is potentially, um, uh, when it comes to hitting that golf ball there, why we're having inconsistency. And again, this is potentially going to stop that fade as well and give you slightly a more neutral ball flight. When we take the club back, I see a lot of reverse pivot going on. So, i.e. that left knee buckles in, our weight potentially goes towards the target. So, actually, rather than loading that right leg, we've got a lot of weight going towards the target. Again, I need to make these videos better so I can put some arrows on here. What happens then, it means that we slide quite heavily into the golf ball. Hands get very ahead of ourselves and your hands are working over time at impact just to get that club face square again. That's going to give you the inconsistency problems. What I want to see is that a start or address, I want you to feel like you're bumping more to the right hand side. So we get more of that weight onto that right leg of yours. That's going to give you a lot more room to then come down into your golf swing from and tiny bit more width. Put a bucket, like a basket, in between your legs. Again, gym work might potentially help with this, strengthening up those quads and um, uh, glutes of yours. But again, there's a few moving parts, but Sam, it's not a disaster. I mean, at the end of the day, you've got a good ball strike on you. That's what I'll be more focused on, trying to feel like you're going more to the right-hand side on the way back. It's gonna give you a tiny bit more room. Club's gonna come down a tiny bit more shallow, because again, that weight's slightly behind it. I still want a descending blow on it, but at the same time, I imagine you're taking quite big divots at the moment. Try and shell out those divots and then it's going to stop this kind of flippy motion to basically close that club face. Because at the moment, your hands are working like over time. Otherwise, you're going to leave it right, right and more right. Sam, if you've got any questions, message me again on Instagram. I'll be happy to help. I can do a video link, all that good stuff. Okay, number two, Miroslav. Thank you for pronouncing your name phonetically because I would have butchered your name. So thank you, mate. I appreciate it. Age 28, handicap 12, played mainly as a junior, getting down to 10. Um, had eight years off due to uni and work um, and only, uh, only really going back into it at the end of last year. So welcome back to the game. Good work. Glad you're playing again. Had a few lessons at the start of the season. Good shot is straight. Bad shot is a low pull or high push slice. So again... For me as a golf coach, automatically I think he's coming across the golf ball because both of those shots can be had with coming across it. A low pull um, and a high slice can happen with that out to end pass. So again, this is why the information is key. As long as that information is correct, which I imagine it might be or is. Uh, improved consistently overall. My long game lets me down and I'm left relying on my Phil Mickelson S short game. Good man. Don't get rid of that. Keep practicing on that Phil Mickelson. <laughs> Uh, getting single figures would be great, but finding fairways and greens is the main goal. Thanks. Any more info you need, let me know. Right, let's have a look at Miroslav's swing. So, as he said, low pull. Again, my probably biggest thing, especially when I'm going to be hitting these, and this is kind of a learning experience for me more than anything. I need to know where you're aiming on that range, so I just need to pick a target. But again, I should have asked a question. Um, uh, just so that I know where you're aiming and where I think you're aiming because they could be two completely different things So club comes back We can see you're probably coming over the top a bit and again I can see that club face working over time trying to start that ball enough left that it finishes on target 
Club face for me is probably the biggest thing here to reduce your handicap. Yes, you're coming across the golf ball a bit. Um, uh, I don't know by how much because obviously I haven't got Trackman data. However, my biggest thing for you, and again, we can have a look at his down the line. Strong position. Both the boys can hit it. There's no question about it. Again, tiny bit of sliding into it. We can work on that consistency-wise. The big thing for me is this kind of action. If you watch that club face, they're basically pointing at us. Hits the golf ball halfway through, pointing behind him. There's a lot of flipping with those hands going over to basically save that shot on the way through. So you watch on the way here as well, on the club down. So again, club face for me is probably the biggest key. You hitting more of that fade, and again, potentially it'd be like a couple of lessons worth, one on swing path, one on club face, but you're doing all the right things. That club face there is pointing too far to the right, and then on the way through, you can see the next frame basically flipping on the way through massively. What I'd want you to get the feeling of is, is keeping that club face at the target as long as possible. Feel like you're hit the ball like you're chipping it. So I want you to chip some shots with your driver, trying to keep, so you see the setup, you've got a beautiful setup there. I want you to basically feel like you are chipping to there and then hitting through to the ball, chipping there, keeping that club face at the target as much as you possibly can on the way through. Basically keeping your hands slightly a bit more ahead of the ball as well, because I think they over rotate on the way down. No, not too bad to be fair. You've got a lot of timing. You can watch your position here. So you see your position there on the way through. Right, right elbow is quite stuck. That means that obviously you have to flip the club face heavy amount to obviously get it back on target. Look up some drills and I'll give you, Miroslav, I'll send you some videos um, and obviously send me some messages. I'll give you some drills to work on swing path. But really to score better with the driver, we need to sort out your club face because even the best hands in the world with the best like hand to eye coordination and obviously you've got great coordination that kind of flipping action there is just going to give you two of two bad shots realistically when we play golf we want one bad shot we definitely don't need two of them at the moment that's giving you way too much work so we need to basically give you drills of keeping that club face a lot more at the target before and after so when you get quick it's down the right hand side of the fairway when you're getting too quick, uh, too um, uh, slow on it, for example, is down the left hand, those hands over release. But that's what I'd be working on with you, to be perfectly honest. Get the feeling like that club face is staying at the target even after impact. So keep working on that club face being open. Again, it's difficult with one of these because when you're looking at a driver, you got to look at swing path and club face. At the moment, you've got a kind of bit of both. I'd want to work on trying to get that club face moving more into out. So you want to feel like that club's a bit more behind you, sitting down like there, for example. So see your takeaway. I want your, basically your downswing to look like this, coming on the way on the inside, keeping our posture a tiny bit more, and then allowing that club face to stay more at the target. But as I said, mate, I'll send you some videos, some drills that you can do to obviously try and sort that out. But otherwise, both of the boys, but easy achievable targets, as I see a lot, They've got more than enough distance in the game to be very good golfers. It's just tightening up, and both of them have got very good shots. How bad are their bad shots? And that's kind of what I'd be looking for. How can we tighten up those bad shots to be so much more precise, less damaging, um, uh, and basically percentage play, making sure that we still got a shot into the flag. Can we get up and down? All that kind of good stuff. All right, guys, I'm off home. Thank you ever so much for watching. Leave this video a like if you like it. Please subscribe. And if you want to be in next week's episode, then obviously add me on Instagram, send me a video, and I'll send you the questionnaire, and we'll go from there. Guys, catch you guys later.